Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Friday, August 23rd, here with a weekend market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and finish off looking at some sector analysis. So we had a really tough Friday here, uh, markets down almost 3% right across the board in all of the major indices. You can see just on Friday alone, uh, from 2.39% in the Dow all the way down to 2.93% in the Qs, it was a rough uh, way to finish out the week, which was an otherwise sort of positive week for the bull case. Uh, and that all came to a abrupt end here on Friday. You can see the five-day change numbers all back in negative territory. We're below the 10 SMA, we're below the 50 SMA, uh, and we are even below the 200 SMA in just the IWM. Uh, but it is uh, getting a little bit more um, concerning out there with the way we sort of finished out the week. We're back to the lower end of the range uh, and we need to start thinking about um, risk to the downside once again. Uh, but before we get into those levels and the charts, let's just take a look here at some of the sectors that outperformed, underperformed. It's pretty much, um, you know, askew to the downside. It was only discretionary utilities and staples here at the top three and only two of those actually held positive over the past five days. Uh, staples down almost one percent utilities uh, up just marginally and discretionary up um, you know pretty marginally as well just under a half a percent over the past week of trading on the downside we have materials which are underperforming the rest we have biotech which follows and then we have Dow transports down uh, a little uh, over two percent over the past week of trading in terms of major markets it was the VIX uh, getting a nice pop here ten percent to the upside followed by silver and gold and on the downside we had natural gas we had oil and we had the s p 500 so let's jump in now to the charts take a look at some levels here this is the s p 500 this is a weekly chart so each bar represents one week worth of trading and this is the cash market now if we look here at this week's candle the first thing we'll notice is that it is an inside week that means that we uh, traded entirely within last week's range that is below last week's highs and above last week's lows that is the definition of an inside bar and in this case it's a weekly bar uh, so we traded all within last week's range and when we just kind of look here at just the overall structure that basically tells us that nothing changed this week in other words we didn't get any type of breakout to the upside we didn't get breakdown to the to the downside uh, we essentially just mold sideways and while certainly can be frustrating and, and sort of choppy erratic behavior, uh, structurally in this market, nothing changed. We're still going sideways here in the same 2825 to call it 2950 range that we've been in for the past 15 or 16 trading days. And uh, the market still hasn't made up its mind just yet on which way it wants to resolve from here. The only thing that we know is, is continued to be true is that volatility staying elevated it did sell off to the lowest of recent times earlier this week we'll look at the VIX in a moment uh, but it is back over 20 so so volatility remains elevated we still have a nice two-way range bound market where we're just kind of chopping back and forth and it is essentially still a time uh, to be defensive and of course that means different things to everyone because it depends on your time frame and strategy but we'll just basically leave it at that it's a higher volatility higher risk sort of environment than we were in just you know two months ago even a month ago so um that's kind of you know where we stand right now uh we still have the macd which is coming back down it's still in positive territory uh but kind of getting closer to say the zero line here on the macd on, on the weekly time frame and given the way we closed here on the week let's go to the daily chart for a moment this was friday's session so we can see all of the damage this week all of the sell-off uh came on friday and this is you know with resurfacing uh trade tensions and you know, whatever the latest headlines are there. You had the Fed uh, in Jackson Hole as well. So there were lots of things going on, but I think mostly attributed to the trade war there. And um, the lows around this 20, 28, 25 level look like they're going to be tested next week. It wouldn't be surprising to see some type of gap down, or even if we gap up, some type of test again of this 28, 25 level of the recent lows seems like it's in order here. And now the big question is, can the bulls, can buyers step in and defend this level for the third time in a row in just under, you know, a month worth of trading? That's going to be the big question. And if we start to resolve lower, if we start to break down, 
around, we do need to be aware or keep an open mind of where this market has the potential to go to. Uh, 2800 or so, that is the key, you know, kind of psychological round level that we've battled with for the past year and a half or so. Uh, that's certainly a mark that we would want to pay attention to. I actually, I, I think we traded down there on futures one Sunday night, uh, two Sundays ago, or I think it was where we traded down. We had a wick of, of I think, just under 2800 so maybe we get some retests there uh, in the coming week. Uh, and if we get below there, if we continue to break down, if selling accelerates or we take a second leg lower, in other words, when I say a second leg, if we sort of think of this here as a potential kind of leg one where we had the initial thrust downward, the initial breakdown, if that was the first one, and then we start to take a second leg, uh, which started essentially yesterday, that would bring us all the way down to about 27.25, which is coincidentally the low here back from uh, the start of June, which is where the market kind of bottomed out and reversed from back on the 3rd of June, which was 2730. So if we do take some type of measured move, second leg lower here, we perhaps project something down to there. Again, it's not, um, you know, it's not a forecast, not saying we have to get down there. We're just sort of mapping out levels, keeping an open mind of where this market has uh, the potential to go if we actually start to break down. And if we do start to get back down here, I believe that would be about a 10% correction off of the highs of this year, which again, when you start to think about it, it is a 10% correction or pullback, whatever you want to label it. Uh, but if you, you know, kind of think of that in context of, of sort of your average uh, run of the mill year for um, even bull markets, um, that is pretty standard uh, behavior. 10% uh, moves to the downside, that tends to happen, um, you know, even once a year, I think is, is probably about the norm. Uh, but don't quote me on that on the exact statistics, but uh, that, that sort of gets you down to those levels. So those are things to think about next week. Uh, if we start to break down, if we do start to lose these recent lows after going sideways for 15 days, the market certainly has some energy and some uh, supply in here to sort of wash out. And that could get us down to around 2725. Below there, we certainly have uh, a bigger air pocket down towards uh, these levels that we haven't seen since the very start of this year. So that's kind of uh, where we're at for the market. Uh, generally speaking, it, it's kind of the same song and dance here we've been in for the past couple of weeks. So again, without sounding like too much of a broken record, it's kind of the same thing where, look, this market environment is definitely different than what we had uh, um, uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And uh, you do want to protect yourself, whatever that means for your strategy or time frame. If you're shorting markets, great. That probably is, is certainly working better now than it has been in recent history. Uh, if you're day trading, you're loving this market. If you're swing trading, you're probably sitting on the sideline or at least hopefully are uh, a bit more than usual. So that's kind of the landscape there. If we go to the VIX real quick, let's just see where it finished because I didn't catch the final print. Yeah, so it is over 20. 20.53 20 is where it closed on. Um, closed on the day here on Friday, uh, maybe some type of, uh, you know, move starting here with this sort of explosive 23% pop today. Um, you know, wouldn't even be surprised, kind of surprised it's not even higher than that, uh, just given we're going into a weekend with this, uh, this big sell off. I really wouldn't be surprised if we had pushed all the way back up to almost 25 or so, but, uh, you know, perhaps the market, um, you know, getting a little more used to some of these, uh, some of this volatility and uh, headlines that are out there, but still a very elevated VIX. We got as low as 15, under 16, we actually broke here on uh, Wednesday of this week. So we certainly had that cool, you know, we we're calming off a little bit. And then of course, you know, everything uh, kind of hit the fan again into the end of the week. So that's, uh, that's the VIX, that's the S&P 500. If we go to the IWM, this again, has been the sort of problem child of the market here for quite a while, and uh, it's continuing to do so because it did close at uh, new lows here, I believe, or very, very close, 155.44. Yeah, by about five or so cents, it, it, it basically undercut, whoops, it undercut the recent lows back here from uh, from Thursday the 15th. So this, you know, when we kind of think about, um, you know, the S&P 500 and its potential to break down, we actually already have the IWM here, which is kind of in the process is potentially a day one of a breakdown here. Uh, it is already undercut uh, the lows here from uh, the June pivot. And uh, if it starts to or continues 
to get follow through and roll over here. There isn't a whole lot of prior support under these areas. Uh, it can move kind of quickly and get ugly uh, if the sellers continue to sort of sink their teeth in here. So uh, this is definitely the concern for the market right now. You know, the one positive note we're, which we can look at here is there is some positive divergence brewing here in the MACD. So in other words, if we have, if we look here just at the fact that we are back towards these lows of August, the lows from, uh, you know, last week or the 15th, uh, we have a MACD that is uh, putting in a much higher low. So that is constructive. But again, that's not by itself a buy signal. It's just something that, uh, you know, is, is is sort of modestly encouraging there uh, for at least um, the, the rate of the sell-off. Uh, but those are uh, some things to think about on sort of both sides of the fence. If we look at the NASDAQ 100 to finish it off, uh, we basically have very similar picture to the S&P 500. We're back to the lower end of the range. We didn't quite break below the lower end of the range. We do have some positive divergence there as well in the MACD. In fact, all of the major indices, I think if we go to the back to the S&P 500, you can see it here as well. So again, that uh, is sort of uh, showing itself across all of those markets, but we do have that high volume breakdown. And um, again, just put a, a point at which we now need to start thinking about some of those uh, downside levels if support doesn't hold. So that is the uh, roundup there on the major markets. Let's go to uh, let's go to TLT next, which uh, you can see here started to get some rotation back to the upside on Friday as we started to get risk off in the equity markets. TLT te generally tends to uh, be favored in those types of environments. This continues to remain in very nosebleed stretched overbought levels. We looked at how uh, rare and how far this thing was stretched in last video, and this continues to be the case, but it did cool off a bit for the past five or six days, potentially looking like it wants to get going again. We'll need to see if, uh, you know, again, depending on if the market can hold up, I think will dictate a lot of uh, the behavior here in TLT. But again, the weekly chart still very stretched to the upside, lots of momentum, uh, you know, recently pouring into here, but it is certainly a tough chase as it uh, does remain pretty historically uh, extended at these areas. If we look at gold here, very similar situation. This also saw uh, some nice rotation here into the end of the week, a lot of volume coming in. It did consolidate for most of this week. It closed at new highs here for the year and uh, this trend momentum everything here remains quite strong as well it's a tough chase but if you're involved in it then uh, you know you're happy and uh, just protect that outstanding risk if you look at silver uh, silver here next also exploded to new highs here for the year uh, got a nice breakout bar today 2.38 percent strong finish uh, not as uh, super cooked to the upside as say gold or TLT but uh, it is certainly stretched now uh, but it is uh, closing at new year-to-date highs. There's not a whole lot of overhead supply above here as it starts to, um, you know, uh, kind of break through the bulk of it from 2018. So that is, uh, well, actually we got, uh, we got energy here. We got oil, uh, oil here on the week was down 1.84%. You can see it did kind of pull off of those, uh, before it could tag 12. It's kind of coming back in, filling this gap, perhaps, uh, still kind of sideways, messy bulls still holding on to this big pivot back here from the seventh. Uh, so for now, uh, we do have, uh, you know, what is potentially just kind of a back and retest here. We'll see if we can, uh, put in some type of higher low or support these prices and not totally give it all back. If we look at natural gas, natural gas also uh, retracing a bit this week, 2% to the downside. It's an inside week for natural gas coming back down to these recent lows. Volume has been pretty low here. MACD continues to positively diverge. So that is, uh, that is everything there for the major markets. Let's take a look at sectors real quick. We'll look at the top performing, bottom performing sectors. Uh, we do have discretionary up here at the top of the list. It was positive on the week by uh, half a percent. You can see this here, much more mild sort of pull. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's an abrupt pullback, uh, but, but the context of the pullback or the magnitude of the pullback, it is only got to about the 50% mark and midpoint of the range. It's not all the way down here to the lower point of the range, like the S and P 500 or even the IWM, which is already breaking below the range. This is trying to hold up a little bit better, but still, uh, you know, doesn't look great here. Uh, it's still tough to get too, too excited about the way this chart looks. So for me, it's not all that interesting. Utilities here did manage to hold green. It kind of came back in and uh, back tested this breakout level from earlier this week or late last week. Uh, it is in an uptrend. It is holding up. It is definitely the defensive safe haven of the market right now. Uh, IYR 
It's actually number three. Uh, so we don't usually, I don't think I track IYR on here, which is why it didn't show up. But IYR, technically the uh, third best performing this week. Uh, we do have, uh, it was still down on the week and it's still, um, you know, still holding this uptrend that it's been in for a couple of weeks now. Uh, doesn't have a strong trend, but it is certainly holding up best in class uh, versus some of these other uh, sectors. On the underperformers, it was XBI. So this is the equal weighted or uh, not equal weighted, but smaller cap uh, biotech ETF. Um, is it equal weighted? God, now I can't remember. It might be equal weighted. Um, I don't know how I'm spacing on that right now, but it is the smaller biotech ETF, unlike the IBB, which is more market cap weighted and skews to the bigger side. This is the smaller cap and uh, kind of like the IWM now, this is looking pretty ugly here if it continues to roll over because there's not a lot of levels to uh, latch on to if it starts to break 79, this $80 area. That's basically where the June lows and this whole sideways range was in. It's kind of where we uh, you know, found some support in early even January and February in this market. If this continues to roll over here, then uh, you know that's gonna be a problem. We do have some positive divergence here in the MACD as well. So that is at least one slight encouraging thing. But like we said, it's not a reason alone uh, to just buy it blindly. XLB, which is materials, uh, and we like this space for quite a while here, but now it's starting to pull back a little more than we like to see. Volume's been uh, kind of on the lighter side. It hasn't been you know, pulling back on extreme heavy volume, which is encouraging to see. Uh, there's a little bit of positive divergence here as well. So I'm gonna keep an open mind about this one. Look at this as potential uh, reversal candidate. If we do see the market stabilize, I'm gonna look at XLB here as a potential opportunity, but for now, I'm not touching it. It still looks like it's uh, you know kind of in a messy space spot right now and last but not least is kind of the other it's ibb so this is the bigger cap weighting we'll skip that we'll go to semiconductors because we basically talked about biotech already uh semiconductors kind of coming back to the lows from last week as well high volume sell off a little bit of divergence there as well on the positive side so uh again doesn't really look too exciting one way or the other so that is uh that's the recap for this week lots of action but basically it's kind of the same thing we left with last week um you know sideways volatile range the same range is still intact so you know depending on how you approach the market uh, kind of the same 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 thing that we're we're dealing with so uh, that's it thanks so much as always for tuning in and watching you can subscribe on our YouTube channel follow us on the trade risk have a great weekend and we'll see you next week